After the amazing success of the Obi-Wan Kenobi show, I figured why not analyze the conflict that he's been involved with the most. And funny enough, this conflict is probably the most iconic one in all of Star Wars. That being Obi-Wan and Anakin's conflict. To a lot of people, this duel not only defines what Star Wars is, but even amongst prequel haters such as myself, cause my god these movies suck. What have I done? I found this duel to be easily the best live action Star Wars fight, like no contest. Now it's easy to say that this fight is great and one of the best in the series, but I feel like we need to ask as to why we may feel like that. When looking at this duel, you'll find one or two things, either the millions of memes that everybody so much so loves, or you'll just be like, cool lightsaber fight, spinning blade, next. But let's take a closer look. Obviously, before this, Anakin and Obi-Wan were both comrades. Obi-Wan trained Anakin due to it being his master's dying wish, despite Anakin being super suspicious to the entire council. And even Obi-Wan himself was sort of hesitant towards this idea, but this was, again, his master's dying wish, so he feels like he has to hold responsibility. Obi-Wan evolves from a Padawan to a Jedi Knight, taking Anakin under his wing and training him into the warrior we would see him become. Now, Anakin is reckless and sort of a hothead, but even just saying that is a little bit of an understatement. To Anakin, the Jedi must do whatever it takes to protect the ones they love, even if it means making the tough choices. This is interesting because the Jedi usually are all about peace and don't care about killing people, but rather specifically bring upon peace. But Anakin's arrogance and rapidly increasing strength brings him to believe that power is everything and he must attain it fast. You see, as Anakin becomes more and more powerful and we see him taking out threats, the Jedi become a little more uneasy. Because yes, while Anakin is on their side, there are still signs of him not really fully embracing the way of the Jedi. This contrasts with Obi-Wan who is rather wise and thinks of things long term rather than like Anakin. Obi-Wan, even at his lowest point, refused to take revenge or power, because it would go against literally everything he believes in. For you non-Clone War fans, well, I'm about to spoil something. So Obi-Wan has a girlfriend, or I should say had a girlfriend, before Maul then turned her into Swiss cheese literally right in front of his eyes just because he felt like it. Despite this and even Maul beforehand killing his friends and Jedi Master, Obi-Wan still maintains the Jedi beliefs and fights embracing the light instead of weird the dark. Obi-Wan at the end of the day is a man who wants to do good with the power he possesses, while Anakin, a man who already does good with the power he possesses, still isn't satisfied. Rather, he wants more of it. Anakin, as things were taking a negative spiral, he began to become closer and closer to the dark side. From his family dying, to feeling useless against Count Dooku, to his premonitions of Padme, Anakin's vision became clearer and clearer. And as I said earlier, the Jedi Council becomes way more intimidated with Anakin rather than acknowledging his strength. Even the person whose power is never ending, he still somewhat feels powerless. Despite him being taught by Obi-Wan, his natural lust for something he's never had is also his undoing. This was something that Obi-Wan saw in Anakin during the Clone Wars, however, obviously Anakin just didn't listen to Obi-Wan and believed that he was right. And what I like about Anakin is that he somewhat reminds me of young Obi-Wan, and I'm not saying that because they have those little ugly ponytails. I'm saying this because even Obi-Wan when he was a Padawan after his master died, relied on using the dark side to gain the edge over Maul. However, even when using the dark side, he still didn't technically win. Now, interpret this how you want, but this could be a little way to show how Obi-Wan and Anakin were once in the same position. Because this is legit the same thing that Anakin does when he fights Dooku in Revenge of the Sith. He sees his master fall, he gets mad, but this time he actually wins. You could maybe say that Obi-Wan tried attempting using the dark side, but due to him technically failing regardless, and the only thing it did was just make him think negatively, and if all it did was just give him negative emotions, it would make sense for him to drop this belief and still just stick with what he believes in. In contrast to Anakin who actually saw using the dark side to be an advantage and the more and more he used it the more and more he saw it being effective 
and the more and more he began to question the Jedi ways. From his mother's death, to being frustrated when dueling Obi-Wan, to fighting Dooku countless times and losing, and him getting away, along with the Jedi Council rejecting him and him having constant premonitions of Padme that he can't do anything about, Anakin's vision became clearer. Anakin never had power, so the fact that he's managed to gain some and it not mattering would clearly enrage him. He'd be frustrated at the fact that he not only can't save Padme, but he'd also be frustrated with the Jedi Council not acknowledging his strength, but rather being intimidated by it. And despite him being taught by Obi-Wan, his natural lust for something he's never had is also his undoing. We see this perfectly conveyed too in one of the most recent episodes of Obi-Wan where Obi-Wan specifically beats Anakin just because Anakin dropped his guard. Anakin is rushing for the W whereas Obi-Wan is thinking of the bigger picture and thinking of other ways to win. Even with how these two fight, it weirdly enhances with what I'm talking about. And I know that sounds a little confusing because why would Obi-Wan and Anakin like saber clashing and them having different styles enhance the overall narrative? It sounds a little weird, I know. but. Think about it for a second. Anakin is very aggressive, someone who mainly just lashes out saber strikes and usually is the one going for hits first. While Obi-Wan's style is mainly a defensive type style, trying to wear his opponents down and overwhelming them eventually. Obi-Wan usually is the one taking the step back or thinking of a counterattack after blocking. Usually when Obi-Wan is fighting, he's thinking of more than just beating down the opponent, whereas that is all what Anakin is thinking about. I know it sounds kinda lame, but just their fighting styles alone convey what they fundamentally believe in. Even in battles they faced together, even when Dooku almost took Obi-Wan's life, Anakin resorted to using the dark side to defeat him, and this was something that Obi-Wan did not agree with at all. He literally tried talking to Anakin right after about it, but Anakin saved him, so he was confused. Eventually, we all know what's to come. Anakin gets manipulated by Palpatine, goes rogue, slays a couple kids, and then goes head-to-head -head with his former master. Anakin literally becomes obsessed with this taste of power to save his wife only for her to be afraid of him and push him away, and this would force Obi-Wan to combat his own student. I really like this battle specifically because it actually makes sense as to why they are sort of relative at this point. I know a lot of you guys don't really care for the power scaling aspect of Star Wars, but just let me talk to you. Anakin and Obi-Wan being this close with each other in power actually makes sense. Anakin had begun turning to the dark side growing in power, but due to him him fighting his former master, who, mind you, wants him to return to the light, makes Anakin emotionally unstable since he's conflicting. His fighting style as well is rather just mainly using savage strikes and having less refinement, showing his fall to the Sith. We know that Anakin doesn't fully go Sith until he technically becomes Darth Vader, which means Sith-eyed Anakin conflicting with himself kind of makes sense. We also see these two specifically knowing each other's moves after training with each other for so long. So much so that they are literally able to counter one another, making Obi-Wan quite literally the best shot at defeating Anakin. However, even with Obi-Wan defeating him, he still feels like he lost at the very same time. Not only is he one of the only Jedi that are around now, he failed his master, he failed his comrades, and certainly, he failed Anakin. Now, we shift to around 10 years later, where they would go on to encounter each other yet again, but this time with Anakin being Darth Vader, and along with Obi-Wan being broken-spirited. Vader legit makes Obi-Wan run away and beats him down with ease, proceeding to then return him the favor and burn him alive. Oh my god, why didn't Vader just kill him? He wanted to give him a taste of his own medicine, mother. Vader getting his revenge on Obi-Wan is one of the most chill-inducing scenes in the entire series, with Obi-Wan just completely distraught at what his former student has turned into, and he can't feel nothing but guilty about it. Eventually though, these two would face each other in a final clash, Obi-Wan's spirit returning along with his power, while Vader would be conflicting from within, showing that Obi-Wan is actually almost reaching him. However, at the end of the day, Anakin Skywalker wasn't killed by Obi-Wan, he was killed by Darth Vader. Which shows us that the Jedi part of him no longer remains and Obi-Wan legitimately cannot do a single thing to redeem Anakin. But I love how even when Obi-Wan was broken spirited and saw Vader as this complete menace, the first thing he thought of was to try and talk to him, not even fight him. 
that uh that kind of reminds me of a certain jedi that uh that he taught i don't know who you guys can name him down in the comments but after this duel these two would go on their separate ways until you know a new hope and then this happens and that is the conflict of obi-wan and anakin i definitely could have gone way more in depth with obi-wan and anakin's character but i figured why not just save that for a video of its own since obi-wan and anakin aren't defined by their conflict obviously but seriously guys let me know down below what you guys thought of this video i did work pretty hard on it i thought i kind of you know i thought i snapped i don't know about y'all but let me know down in the comments leave a like subscribe if you are new to the channel hit the bell icon you guys already know all that good stuff my chair is squeaking i'm getting pissed i'm going to go take a nap have a good day